Hi, this is uh, Rich Navila, and we're going to work on Sean. And how are you going to start? What are you would like to address first? Well, we know that he has problems regarding the food. Like you know, has to get a specific amount, not too much, not too little, and stuff. Uh, his stomach area, and also like you know, in the last session we had a thing with mantis and the energy and different things, and it was affecting his body. So I would like to scan him, like see if I pick up anything new, and go from there. You know, like more entities, maybe energy blocks, maybe some agreements and different things. See what's up. Mhm. Mm uh, we're getting some reads on entities, big time. All right. So we can be sure to tune yeah. in on that. Um, do you want to just jump in, or you want me to like look at? When Sean's uh, issues first started happening, do you have any idea? Yeah, I think like we can just jump in. Like I would like to scan his body because like you know, we we started like this is how we started like last time. Like you checking out how it like went and all, mm -hmm. and now I want to like continue the process, see how he's doing, if there's any energy breaks and different things, and go from there. Okay. Yeah. So you got a place to start. You know what you're gonna look for. Yeah, I'll, I'll just like scan his body and go from there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'll guide you. Start. So I'm scanning his body, and as I start looking at it, like you know, I spot these like dark clusters or dark energy spheres around his body. One is in the stomach, and his uh, his chest, neck, and shoulder area. That's what, like when I'm noticing them. As I'm looking through it, scanning, like it's as if like they pick me up, like oh, like there, there they come, they see us, and so they are afraid, and they scatter around. So. You know, I can try removing those things, making sure that they're fully out, because like right now these are like cockroaches running from the light and all. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'll do that first. Yeah, good idea. Okay, go for it. I got to this interview, but like I'm seeing this being, um, it reminds me of this hammer shark, if that's how you say it. Hammerhead shark. Yeah, hammerhead shark. Because it's like a, it's like black entity, it's like very dense, made out of a lot of these other beings, and it's working like a radio. I guess, and the, the the head, like you know, like it looks like a hammer, and it's like it's as if like these two spheres that can get information from the surroundings, pick up like other entities from other people, different things, and it just like enhances the whole feeling state. So the smallest things in the surroundings or like his life will trigger him and cause like this fear, panic, uh, worries, concerns, and just like really mess with him. So that's what I'm picking up so far. Mm -hmm. Like an amplifier. Yeah. It takes a sound and it, or, or it takes an emotion or an energy phenomenon and amplifies it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that also is connected to the other entities. And his body and other people around him, the surroundings, like wherever he might go, that entity is just left like it's attached to him and it's following Sean, like Sean. But that entity is like more, it needs other beings nearby to cause damage and stuff. Okay. And so, like, it's, it's, it can, like, pick up, like, a transmission from our beings, like, whatever, that being, like, oh, what if, what if, what if. And another entity can have worries, concerns, and that hammerhead shark being looking entity will pick up the emotion or whatever it is that the other, other beings have, and it's going to amplify it and, and make Sean feel it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll get you to that being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm I got rid of the entities and I'm like scanning, like, you know, are there anything else in this, uh, energy surroundings and different things. And what I'm picking up is like, um, probably one of the past lives. And right now, it's as if, like, part of him, because of the recent incidents that have affected his body, it's as if, like, it's resistance of living. And I think, like, you know, in, in past life, uh, he, he that he had this is where he killed other people. Reasons I don't know yet why uh, we have those diff like we have those lives. But because of taking away lives of others, he uh, probably feels guilt or whatever. And because of that, he sort of like those incidents where he took away food from others or like were like following orders and just torturing others, like you know, like like in prison or whatever, something like that. And uh, like it's it's like sort of vague right now, but I'm just picking up like that, like because of others. Uh, dying and having those incidents, it's just like he's blaming himself and like trying to cause himself the same thing. 
Yeah, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so without, uh, you know, no judgment here. We've all done both sides of this. Okay. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and do a, a deep dive into uh, that aspect of Sean's past where you're sensing it, feeling it, just tune right into the, the, the gory details of yeah. what happened, what he did. And, okay. Uh, that's related to his condition now. Okay. Okay. Hmm. This probably would make sense. I'm looking into the connections, where is it and all. And it's like I visited these galactic federations. I was like involved with them and followed by them and stuff. And you galactic know, what? Galactic federations. Uh huh. Like there's like a lot of them, like like the whole alphabet and structures or whatever. Mm. Um, so with all these galactic federations, there's this intergalactic prison, and like you know, what whoever like is notorious for whatever reasons, killing or doing too much or whatever. Like you know, hey, this being is doing too much. Let's get him. Mm -hmm. So there's this intergalactic prison where, you know, we have all kinds of species, like reptilians, greys, humans, Arcturians, Pleiadians, like all kinds of beings are in there. And with it all, there, there's a place where sh uh, they give like rations of how much the prisoners get, eating and stuff like that. And Sean is the one, I think like responsible for like, n not necessarily uh, setting how much they're going to get, but he's the one who's going to give the food and serve them and stuff. And with all that, like, he's counting the, the rations, if that's the right word, of, like, how the how much prisoners are going to get. And not all of them are, like, uh, satisfied, but in this life, yeah, he has to count, like, specific rations of how much he, he can eat. Like, you know, it has to be a very specific amount of food. Oh, and in that life, he was counting rations for other people. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, like <clears throat> he asked, like, you know, that, that was his words, like, you know, hey, like, do this and stuff, like, serve, serve the prisoners. And a lot of them were dissatisfied. Like, or, or, you know, like, I'm looking at a place where, like, you know, someone grabs him throughout the jail cell, like, and hits him or whatever, like, because they, like, you know, were angry and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, like, various cases, but I'm just, like, I need to look at deeper into this, but, like, so far, I'm, like, we're getting more details and so it's making more sense. Okay, good. Continue. It seems like in that prison, they have very harsh rules of, like, the discipline, the willpower, all the rules, everything has to go exactly by the book. And if you don't do it, then they're going to torture you. Like, you know, electrify you in the chair, uh, wipe your memories, or, like, cause some intense pain. Uh, do, like, there are, like, lots of very variations of how people can get hurt. And, you know, counting rations for others while they eat, but also, like, you know, how much did, does the crew get? And what if you do a little bit too much, a little bit too little? And, you know, if you're like, you know, hey, I'm starving here, I need a little bit more food, you take one bun or whatever, and then they, uh, they're like, you know, have cameras everywhere. It's like, the whole prison is like organic being, and it's, it has ears and eyes everywhere, you know? Uh, all the walls is the same organic consciousness being. Um, uh -huh. And it can literally, like, you know, see everything and report to the headquarters or whatever, like, you know, hey, like, boss, we have this going on. And, you know taking a little bit of more food to survive another day because it's, it's actually strict, strict, harsh and not nice in there and so then they literally electrify you or like so plug in some it's like a pipe plugged into the stomach causing intense pain or whatever mm -hmm. so like so some of these things are just popping up and all uh -huh. now is this Sean doing it to them or is it happening to Sean or it's, it's happening? it's happening to Sean like I, I saw like you know Sean is like uh, working in a prison ward and he's more like you know like uh, he has to take care of the prisoners, give them food and different things, uh, write all the like little details. But he's like one of the guards there, or something like uh -huh. just one of the workers in the in the prison. And you know that's where you know he has to count rations for everyone. That's like one of the bigger signs, like you know that that stands out. Another one, like you know, if you take a little bit too much, you're trying to be kind, like you know, try, trying to take care of others, mm -hmm. or you're trying to survive yourself, and then you get pu punished for that. And that's yeah. like electrifying the pain and stuff like that. Like that, that, that would so be if, he, if he eats too much, more than his ration, uh, he will get a lot of mm, pain or uh, discomfort and well, stuff going on with him. After the, after the tor torture. Yeah, like, after they're, they're the gonna, torture. They're going to torture him or, or yeah. do whatever, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And like that's where like the whole thing of, I can't call it a paranoia, but like you have to get everything right. You go a bit wrong and not do it by the book, you're gonna be in pain. And so in order to survive, you have to do everything exactly as they say. 
and yeah. you have to wash absolutely everything, every single detail, every single dust, and like a little thing like oh you 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 forgot to clean this table, you, you forgot this one little speck of dust, and then they sit you down and they cause you like you know, the like charge electricity and do different things and like you know torture you wow. or whatever. So that's very strict place. Like I think that the Gar like guards are having even more of life than the prisoners themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. So I'll look deeper into this whole thing. Mhm. Mm hmm. Okay, so like I'm looking into like you know the story of like why is Sean there? Like you know, was was the whole thing? Mm -hmm. And apparently, like you know, there's a specific training. It's it's probably connected to the Galactic Federations or like some bigger communities organizations out there. And you have to be a guard to level up. Like it's it's a specific strict rules, mm -hmm. and with the longer you play uh, as a good one, like you know you do everything as they say. When you get specific uh, discipline, and they become like trustful or like you know can consider you as being loyal now, uh, then they give you more orders. Like you know, hey, now you're the captain of this place. Now you can do do, do more. But with every level up, there's more access to information. Mm -hmm. Information to prisoners and their lives and their backstories, like you know what you get, like as uh, above as the guard. Like when you're guard, you can hear stories from prisoners, but how much of that is true or not, you don't know. But then you level up, and now you have access to the archives of all the prisoners in there, so you can find out their backgrounds, where they came from, who they are, the things that they did, and it's sort of like all of them. Mm, I don't like has a sort of implant or like it's like RFID chip or something like that, where you can actually access all of their thoughts, their, the whole thinking process. And it's it's very similar to Matrix, to where they can connect connect you, and you download the pro program and know everything about it, and you mm -hmm. learn the, all the skills. So you literally like uh, just touch it or like or like you know like a fingerprint scan, and you hold it, and you literally access information, and you get like get it all in front of your eyes, and you can just like really like, like photographic memory or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's that, and once you become like the head of the this person. Uh, you get offered like you know you can become the organic consciousness and control it and like you know even uh, tell what kind of prisoners we need to get and stuff like you start controlling orders or you can go t to these like galactic archives where they have even more stuff and be uh, like guardian there like you know like the f like making sure that all the archives are like in order like protecting that place but in your free time you can access absolutely all the information all of the history like uh, uh, galactic history, all of the events like spaceships or whatever, like you know, you're gonna get the blueprints and all of that. And like, uh, Sean is after the information, he loves learning, he loves all this difficult stuff that that is challenging for most people to learn. He's really good at it, he, mm -hmm. he's really talented and he, he, he can go for it. But that's the thing, like, you know, he has to go through this rough training and un until the, he, he can reach that place. Uh huh, yeah. And, and like one of those like you know hey I want to live I want to survive I want to do everything I can until I get there and so like the whole strict life there I think like it, it done a lot of harm to how it is with all the pain which is probably seen at some points in this life yeah his activities in this life are triggering uh, that the issues in that life or the uh... yeah like you know like like solar memory or whatever and you can just like walk to the room and there's dust there and that might be a trigger because you forgot to clean up the dust in the air place and not cleaning dust means like you know hey you're gonna get like the zap and stuff be yeah. careful so mm -hmm. tons of triggers tons of triggers yeah okay yeah, yeah definitely uh okay next let's but, uh, mm, I'll try to redo the traumatic instance, like you know, just leave all the memory. I'll, I'll try to redo the traumatic instance, uh -huh. like leave all of his memory and the experience there, but make sure that anything that hurt him, all of the bad agreements, decisions, or anything that like caused pain, I will remove that so that it wouldn't be affecting the present. Yeah, if you spot the decisions, uh, yeah, uh, and the agreements made and, and the uh, uh, intentions that. I'm picking up another thing, like, you know, when he's zapped, and if anyone's talking in the background, it becomes a command. That's another thing to check, like, all the incidents where he was unconscious, and what happened in the background, like, as, as if, like, that might be a thing. That's definitely a thing. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Like, I'm, I'm looking at it, and, like, the, the whole prison system, and those more of uh, in charge and stuff, they will scan every, everyone, like, whoever wants to work and stuff, they can, like, literally connect it to the machine, get you unconscious 
and access your memories, so they will know absolutely everything. Like you know, like they can literally like watch a movie with what you experienced, and they can alter it. They can alter your memories and stuff. Wow. But so like it's like uh, they access one's memories, and they copy the file, they copy the recording, and they know you, the truth about who you are. But then every every prisoner who's in there will get a uh, change in their history and their memories. So who's ever there, they cannot tell or reveal their true intentions or real life. So all of them are telling fake stories, but for them it's real. Wow. And so like whoever's working there, they might try to get information from prisoners, and it's never gonna work because like you're always getting the false information, while only the head will like you know like the controllers or whoever rules the place will know this stuff. And once you level up, this is when you start accessing those files. Mm -hmm. And Sean, in one of those places where he, he he gets zapped, that's when they start like looking at your head, like what you have, what's your intentions, who you are, and stuff like that. Yeah, uh -huh. So it's quite well, a rough place. Yeah. Okay. Continue. It seems that um, this prison, even though it's like very harsh, it's working in order to write the galactic history, or like the multiverse history. Correct it? Uh, just write it. Like just rewrite it? or ju Just write it. Write it? Yeah. Write as in uh, writing with a pen and pencil or write as in right and wrong? Correct uh, it? Write. Like write with the pen and pencil. Oh, okay. But, but more like true on their computers and stuff. Oh, I see. Uh, like every being they access, they will like get all of this information. Like what he learned, what he studied, everything he saw, everything he said and heard and stuff. All the history of the person will be taken from them and then it's modified in order to like you know hey we have to make sure that both sides the good ones and the bad ones they keep changing it all the time we don't know what's going on we have to make it like there has to be at least one explanation of things mm -hmm. so er er everyone that's like captured for whatever reasons their memories are altered so that like whenever they're free or whatever they might tell stories but it's never gonna reveal the real stuff uh -huh. and so only that specific group that works in the prison, they're gonna record everything and more like keep things straight, at least for them. They know what's mm -hmm. up, they know what's up in the planets and different things, and it's very strict for reasons, you know, like they have their own information, everyone does. Yeah. Uh, but so, so Sean, he, he gets through being a guard, he levels up, now he has to be the one that does the rewriting of the his like history or the memories of others. Uh -huh. So he's the one wiping the memories of others. And you know, having to like type down like you know er everything about this being was learned, and basically, they're like uh, they are they're very organized. Every single race has their thing. Every single issue is regarding like you know like everything's like grouped, and whenever there's something similar, they compare it and see how truthful it is. Like how how many things like that, and like you know they're like trying to explain things for themselves, like understand how things works and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm up so far. Okay. It all seems like, you know, it's like a research place where um, everything they do with these prisoners is basically a test. Let's see how this race reacts to this. And every single race will have a different reaction. Every single race will have a different outcome and all. And so, like, you know, just changing the rations of food is one thing, but then changing the activities, changing the conversations, changing with who you talk to, how you talk to, like, ten tons of different ways of variations of how they're going to do it. And it's like they're studying the psychology or like how do these beings react. So like uh, every race is written about like, you know, like how reptilians work, how the Anunnaki, how like humans or Pleas, like everyone will have a specific reaction. And they're like mapping out what kind of beings do we have in the universe? What's the order? Uh, how do they like both communicate or collide or like get in fights and why and stuff like that. So like just going like really deep into all this stuff yeah. in their own ways. Yeah, good, good. Continue. Yeah, there's there's a lot to learn here. Like I'm looking like deeper into the structure, like what's above the prison, what's what's next, and this like archives where we were talking about. It's more than that. It's like the work is the the place of like having archives and the story of, or like history of uh, all the races, all the pl like places and different things. But at the same time, it's like working like an information center, because uh, like when some of the groups will go on missions, like, you know, they have to tell about what they're going to do. It's like people are playing in the multiverse and they're like, hey, we're going to play in this place. This is what we're going to do. We're going to fight these guys here and here. And so that other guys wouldn't get in the way or wouldn't get in the fight, they're making sure, like, you know, like, hey, this place has a traffic, don't go there, go around that. 
So it's very weird, but it's like everything's like playing out, and like you know, even though we're calling them bad guys or good guys or whatever, both sides agree that like, oh, okay, we're gonna duke it out here. Others can go around us. Yeah, it, it reminds me of uh, the idea once again of, uh, you know, when we were wiser, bigger, better beings, both sides being dark or light or good and bad or whatever. But there was a time when we played games, and it's just like in a computer game. Everybody's going to log in, but before you log in, everybody, let's touch bases and make sure that, you know, mages can do this, but these kind of mages can't do that. And this is, are you being this race of orc or that, that uh, nord or whatever, you know, get all set up before you go in and play. But then when you go in and play, you duke it out, you know, and you battle yeah. it up and fight it out. But back in those, those days, you could blow real shit up. Yeah, and it's okay. Um, we were beyond that. Uh, that part of the the problem of, of gameplay. But I'm not sure exactly where what you're looking at fits into the big the context of these levels of gameplay in universes. But yeah, that's what what I reminds me of. Yeah. So like, there's a lot to it. Like, I'm looking at it like one thing after another. Like, it's all news. Like, whoa, was this? Was this? Was this? Like, you know, like it's uh -huh. there's a lot to digest and all. But it seems like um. In order to work there, like in, in that center in the archive place and stuff, you have to kill all the urges. Like, not be selfish. Not have any. Like, you know, you can't have your own intentions of like, hey, I'm gonna do this when I get there and whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to really forget about it and if you don't you can never get to that level and even if you do get to that level somehow it's like if you fuck it up you're gonna be hunted and you're gonna be killed mm -hmm. like this is really like in a wanted level high and it's like whatever but basically mm, you can't use that place in order to get information about other race and then use it against someone else you can't uh, sell information you can't uh, you, you do anything bad with it you know you, you can't use it in any sort of way except like learn more because you like it and you mm -hmm. want it sure and makes sense. you know uh so with all that like you can uh, access all the archives and it's like uh i don't like being an architect of matrix where you constantly have an out of body experience and you can visit absolutely everything uh -huh. it's like taking an artifact and literally moving into it and seeing everything for yourself hearing all the confirmations because like you know some people can read about it some people can uh, hear it on audio track but like they're giving all the access of like all the way of accessing information and you can literally have an out of body experience and be there and see mm. everything for yourself mm -hmm. with expl explain like you know the intentions of this party the intentions of this party and how it all happened and why the conversation is like there mm -hmm. it's like a watching a movie with a background text of every single character and their like sort of whatever mm -hmm. so like you know and you can visit one rel after another like all of beings and gr re like races and planes and existence like it's, it's really amazing of how much is there wow. and in that center like you know you can there's a archives of information but there's also like you know archives and it's like um someone's working in the game and servers and stuff and they can unplug and, and plug different places so to make sure that it, it can all happen like on one level but always keeps teleporting to a different place connected and disconnected to make sure that some parties, if they want to duke it out or do something in a certain place, they don't like get in the way of each other. Yeah. Um, so, like you know, for example, you're a spaceship, uh, like you know, with a crew, and you're going somewhere, and now you need materials. You call the center, report them what what kind of materials you need, and you know, like now they can give you information to the planets and stuff, and then you know, they want to see what kind of game you're playing. Do you want to like you know? Uh, kill them, do you wanna like, you know, collide and stuff, like what's your what's your mission, is it, are you friendly or not? And then there's like list of like choices. Like so it's like everything is tracked. All of the history is tracked. And uh -huh. and in order to be there you have to be like pure. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like hardcore uh, training together. So it's like it's one yeah. of the things that Sean is doing. Yeah. And that sort of thing, like being there is what causes the sort of like very hard uh, rules in life. A little incident, a little worries and stuff. You cannot pass. You cannot go further. And in order to grow and be the most you can be, you have to be very strict with their rules over that mm -hmm. place. So that's what I'm finding out so far. Wow. 
Well, do you want to look some more? Or is that a good place to wrap or what? Mm, I'll look at do like Sean's involvement into it all, like you know. His what? Uh, Sean's involvement. Uh huh. And, and like see like what happens next. Uh huh. And go from there. Okay. Good. It's very interesting. Like there's lots of things, but it seems that the uh, beings who go like even above that, what they become is the parallel universe. Literally, like consciousness becomes the parallel universe, wow. and it extends the creation of the all existence. And like you know, like then you can alter, like you know, hey, now you know absolutely everything, and you can make your own your own alterations to the all the events, all the history, all the beingness and stuff, and just create different life forms and just extend the possibilities. Wow. And so. It seems like a like one time or or one lifetime thing, uh, but for people who choose to like you know they don't go over top to expand it, if they decide to quit or like get in their life or do something else and like hey I quit this is enough I, I'm done, mm -hmm. uh, their memories have to be wiped, because they cannot use that in somewhere else they, like you know oh I know a lot about this history mm -hmm. I'm gonna anchor it somewhere else and I'm gonna use it and stuff, that cannot happen sort of against the rules. Sure. So they try to mind, like you know, like delete everything they can, like you know, wipe the whole existence, and even if the consciousness can tap into those experiences because it can, mm -hmm. and the structure cannot stop it, then you become targeted by their machines, by different things, and they will sort of cause a traumatic instance to recreate like all the pains and different things, or now like the life will have sort of like difficulties or whatever, and there's like. Increasing the challenge of existence or living or whatever, mm -hmm. and they like keep to keep trying trying to prevent one from being able to access all the memories. Uh huh. So that's like picking up some some of the things. Like it's it's weird. There's a lot to it. I'm like, whoa! I've never been here before. Yeah. Wow. That's that's amazing. It has uh, a little bit of the shades of uh, or uh, flavor of. Uh, the galactic historian Andrew Bartz, it's, he's he can tap into the the, the all-knowing galactic history. Yeah. Uh, so he may have gone through similar training as this. Uh, it could be the same thing or something a lot different. There's also another one uh, of this recording. It has to do with Earth, the Living Library. Mm -hmm. That's the Pleiadians. Uh, Barbara Marciniak uh, wrote a book on that subject, Earth, the Living Library. Yeah. And that's an attempt, or uh, the project was to uh, load up all the uh, the data and the uh, memory and the history of our uh, universe mm -hmm. into the Earth, the or the organic life on Earth, uh, in the living library they call it. So it looks to me like there are different factions or federations or groups of advanced beings are uh, working at recording the all of it yeah and with all that said this is they're doing it with different strategic ways or technological ways there is that other thing it's just uh you tapping into the the mind of god or the the god consciousness of all that is which is a spiritual psychic way of accessing it yet another way yeah and all these other ways are more like high-tech advanced super high advanced technology ways of doing these things mm. so I'm, that's what i'm getting that there's a there's different kinds and flavors and ways of the uh, groups trying to work in the memory of the, oh, yeah. uh, the galaxy thing and then you tapped into this particular one that sean got uh caught up in yeah, totally. Like you know, with all the alterations and groups out there, like there's so many alphas out there, mm -hmm. so many, and you know, to say that this is the only way it happens it would be a complete lie. Like, yeah. If, no, like there's tons of different groups now, but like it's it's really interesting to see how it works. Yeah. Because literally, like at some points, like they, uh, it's as if everything is happening on the same plane. There's no above or below. It's everything like on the same plane. It's just that someone's clicking buttons and turning it off and turning it in and like changing it up for others. You know? mm -hmm. It's it's weird. Like I still have to like understand that better, but wow. it's it's interesting. Yeah, good stuff. 
podcast. So, with all that being done, with all the information, with all the story, with all the lore, now is going through all of that and mm-hmm. just sort of clearing all the stuff that might trigger Sean and, like, you know, cause any problems and stuff. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, go ahead. Okay. I was thinking, uh, as you start, I'm sorry to mm-hmm. interrupt you. Uh, uh, spotting decisions and agreements and conclusions, like after things uh, have been done, a person will conclude, you know, draw a conclusion, this is the way, this is what that was, this is the takeaway, and then that becomes a, a belief within the consciousness. Um, and those those basic uh, beliefs can carry through from one life to another. And yeah, to another. That, that's a good thing to look at as well. Okay, okay go ahead. That. Look specifically, like there's uh, either decisions or, or beliefs or whatever, but it's like um, everything has to be by the book. It has to be controlled. There has to be some laws and, and something strict and like the way it's it's supposed to be and all, all that. Everything has to be explained and like uh, you know we follow it like scientific whatever terms, because mm-hmm. that openness to like all the possibilities means that you know like hey we're gonna catch hell for that. Don't do that. Like you know, in in that place, in that structure where he was uh, living and doing things, uh, you can't you can't be open to all the stuff. You can't be that free, mm-hmm. and having freedom right now is dangerous. It's it's gonna be harmful. It's gonna hurt you. It's gonna like it's it's not good to do that because like eventually you're gonna catch you for that, and so everything has to be like specifically like in one way or another. Mm-hmm. So much like sure. a few days. Yeah, continue. It's like um, there's this probably solar memory, but it's as if like whenever he's living here, and part of his uh, consciousness can recall the experiences and access the information of things that happened, and like just get this vast knowledge. His body is in a big resistance, and it has these shock waves. It reacts with like pain or like just rejecting everything, rejecting information, rejecting food, rejecting life, everything, you know. Mm. And so the body is like in, in sort of like a like a programmed thing, and not necessarily from the present, but like because of all the past torturing and stuff. Sure, yeah. So that's one of the things. <laughs> okay. Do you want to look more? Yeah. Okay. Another thing, like that place, it's it's like, you know it has that military lifestyle or some sort of organization group lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So everything is timed and scheduled, and like there's a way how you do things, but you do it as a community. And by being off by yourself, you don't. If if you forget the schedule, it's gonna again hurt you. So even like living alone or being alone for a certain period of time, and just having to make decisions of your own can be hurtful. If if you forget anything, if if you forget one smallest detail or not mm. think about it, mm-hmm. and so in this life it's probably like pays back where like you know hey if you're alone if you're thinking too much little worries it's gonna come back at you like you know you're just gonna like really worrying about surviving and doing it right to achieve that stuff and you know you can't mess it up and it's really like really controlling his life here yeah so in this life he's got a lot of triggers uh triggering this stuff yeah yeah it's as if like um because of the harsh training and the torture out there this body or like subconsciously it's all reacting right now in the present sure yeah it's, it's smallest things will catch him and, and like really get him so, yeah, okay. just saying. Yeah. Okay, continue. It's as if, like, there's um, that prison place or whatever, like, that's the whole structure in the organization. They have quite a few other squads to monitor things uh, away from their zone. Like, in like every realm and stuff will have those little goons and whatever. Uh, call them whatever, like, I, I don't know, but it's like people who want you to believe in, in God and church and they're pushing their beliefs on you. Mm-hmm. So they can be invisible or they can turn it invisible and stuff, but they will be around people who who visited with that place even once. Doesn't matter how long mm-hmm. they stayed in their stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, going, like, you know, pushing them into, like, you know, hey, you have to do this, you have to do that. And, like, they're constantly pushing and trying to impact, affect the person, like, influence them, um, if that's the right word. And one is like, you know, affecting their thinking and stuff. The other one is like, you know, they're still in, under that uh, strict regime. 
Mm -hmm. And if a person is having a more free lifestyle, they're going to be triggered. It's like those little things that have a pointing stick or whatever, like, you know, like they, they will harm the being. Prod, like a kind cattle of like prod, sort of. Bzz, bzz. Yeah. But metaphysically or cat uh, mm, mm, metaphorically speaking. Yeah. And, you know, so, so like th these beings are trying to force one to live under those rules, again, mm -hmm. because, like, that's the lifestyle. And it's also, like, a way to prevent from accessing all the memories and, and just remembering everything. Because the more they can, like, sort of trigger little things and, and push them into a certain way, the being will do things. But it's basically like being under, uh, under control. And, like, you know, hey, if, if an animal will not take a photo with people, it's going to get smacked or whatever, like, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So, like, constant triggers, constant worries and thoughts and different things. Whatever they can trigger, whatever they can find your buttons and all the stuff, they're going to do it. Yeah. So that's another thing that's happening. Yeah. I was, like, we're doing all the incidents, and then I just found this group, like, you know, hey, what are you guys? <laughs> so, uh -huh. I just wow. kind of get through them. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like, this seems like, I'm, I'm getting rid of the, the entities, and I'm, like, looking at the soul contracts right now. And this organization has this sort of, like, a pact or a contract or whatever, like whenever you get in there, you cannot um, use your information or memories for a few billion years. Because after a few billion years, you will do so many things that you don't even want to use that information. You know, so they're like, we try to like have enough time pass until they allow you to live normally again. Yeah, I see. That makes sense. Yeah, so it's like being under some sort of group and they're like controlling you then. Uh -huh. Agreements made way in the past coming affecting you now yeah mm -hmm. yeah so i'll see like what kind of agreements does he has with this group and all of them mm -hmm. okay good mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. actually like, these uh, agreements and different things were like you know we have to li live under a specific um discipline like there are like tons of different disciplines and everyone can have their own but it has to be specifically those that organization discipline uh, not, not being able to access the memories, not being able to share it with other people, not being able to do this, this, and that, and that. That's different things. And if anyone around you has the ability to help you to remind, remember those things, to access the things, uh, memories and the, uh, you know, whatever, uh, it's like there's insider organism or whatever to reject that, to push it away, to, like, you know, be... Mm, made to go the other direction to like sort of hey don't look at that you know repel kind of like yeah being repelled or repulsed or pushed away or you know pressure beams yeah so like you mm -hmm. know whenever you can access or or use the things to recall everything that happened there to break free or whatever mm -hmm. it's like you know like people are being repelled like you, you have to be like under sort of strict like you know leash or whatever yeah wow. so I'll, I'll look for more okay continue Yeah, I'm deleting uh, or like revoking the soul contracts and stuff. And a lot of, have of it has to do with the beliefs from the past life. Like, for example, being in a place and collecting information, like the history about every single race and whatever, you start buying into what the, that race is like. Oh, humans get susceptible to viruses and bacteria. Humans get sick. Humans die. Humans don't live long, for example. There are various things. But just because a few people had it doesn't mean that everyone will do. Or like, you know, so basically those beliefs affect the present, this is how humans are. Yeah. And you don't have the open look, you have like by the book. And mm -hmm. that's how you have to go. So I was like provoking all that because uh, living by the book, you already have your life described to you, how, how it has to be. And you know, so not having a feeling like I'm just like getting rid of that. Good, good. Yeah, so I'll look for the, uh, I guess like, I'll, I'll give him the energy that was used up and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, look for maybe soul fragments or whatever. And we'll go from there. Okay, good. Continue. Okay. Okay, what happened? Yeah, like, uh, I was getting back the soul fragments and just, like, freeing all the essence. Everything that was, like, you know, from, from the torture, from different things that was taken from him, like, I just, like, got them back and transmitted it, the good energy and just filling up with all the good stuff I could find. Like, mm -hmm. you know, en energized and really healthy and open, different stuff, and, yeah. Good. We'll see how it works. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs>